regions in general are areas that share some type of characteristics or activity. For example, this map shows world climate regions or areas of the Earth that share some climate characteristics. In this course, we will focus on large global scale regions that we call realms. You might think of realms as global neighborhoods that share a collection of physical and cultural characteristics. As we go through this course, we will note that some realms are what we call monocentric. This means they are dominated by one major country. So, for example, the Russia-Central Asia realm is dominated by the country of Russia, and that is most of the area and contains most of the population of that realm. Other realms can be called polycentric, or a collection of countries that are more equal in terms of size or population. For example, Europe is made up of a collection of more smaller countries compared to Russia-Central Asia. These global realms can be divided up into regions or sub-areas that have something in common. So here in this figure we have global realms, which are roughly the chapters of your book. And here we have those realms divided into regions. When it comes to regions, they all have something in common. They have an area, or they occupy space that we can measure, they have boundaries, and they have a location, both absolute and relative location. We can subdivide regions into two types, formal regions and functional regions. Formal regions are what we usually think of for a region, areas that share some characteristics. Another type of region is what we call a functional region, or an area defined by some sort of activity. For example, San Francisco is different than neighboring cities of the Bay Area, but they are all linked together by activity, such as how people travel to and from work each day. So functional regions are linked together by activity, not the characteristics, and aren't necessarily homogeneous like formal regions are.